Dr. Livingston, I presume. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't resist that. Hello! It's autumn. It's September the 9th, 10th. 12th. 12th, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting on into the middle of September. And it's time to harvest the switch. This, this video comes to you from my badger proof. Just, that's for Val in up the road wanted to see it so this is how to keep badgers off your sweet corn and look at that that is just so beautiful and it's going to be sweet and tasty and delicious so we're going to harvest the sweet corn today <laughs> if, I can get out. if i can get out without killing myself <laughs> right being autumn everything needs doing now it's been weird this year we started, we had a, um, a late frost in April that killed all the runner beans, so they had to start again. The late frost in April also killed all my baby figs. And I've had three figs off that this year, that's all. But there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of babies coming on somewhere. Oh, up there. Oh, there we go. There's some babies in there. There's some bigger ones on there somewhere. But uh, So we haven't had a fig crop this year. But we have had lots of lovely butternut squash. Look at that. That's really beautiful. The squashes generally have done pretty good. Early on, the badgers got into my courgettes and dug the whole lot up. They weren't after the courgettes. They were after the worms that were in the manure underneath it. So they're just about recovered and I've had a reasonable crop off those. Raspberries. I've run riot. I've not actually been able to get much done the past two or three months. It's been a weird summer. We've had lots going on at the house and when I could get down the weather wasn't right. So it's been one of those years. This plot, by my standards, is totally untidy and overgrown. But it's still been productive. So we're not going to complain. Jobs for autumn. This is a strawberry patch. This is being moved for next year. Oh, pulled that off. That's a baby strawberry. So that'll get potted up. See the lovely roots coming on there already? That'll get potted up and then when I've prepared a, a patch, probably in the spring, I like to get them in, in the autumn if I can, so if, if, if I can I will. If not, in the spring they'll be in their pots and established and that'll go into a new patch. The raspberries as well from over there, they're all coming out. A friend of mine in Spain sent me some seeds and he said it was a red Spanish pumpkin. That's all I got from it, and they're coming up like that. This scratches badgers again, believe it or not, where they're after slugs and worms and they just scratch everything. So uh, we'll see how they turn out. You may notice some marigolds here. For the first time I've tried companion planting, and somebody said marigolds are good for keeping white fly off, and in the early part of the year it did. They did work really well, and I'm really pleased. But just lately, We've got, you won't see it on the, on the video, but there's, there's actually quite a lot of white fly appearing again now. Again, jobs for the autumn. This is an asparagus that I chopped off a couple of weeks ago. And all these lovely little red berries, they, are, they contain asparagus seed. So I'll harvest those and save those, and I'll put a new row of asparagus in. Here's the old asparagus, and each year I put one little row of new ones in, and you can see it's still growing, believe it or not. How strange is that? It's the time of year. Put some cauliflowers in for next year. This all needs weeding, um, as you can see. Over there we've got some outdoor tomatoes, which are all self-sets from last year. They popped up on various places in the plot, and I just, because I've not, I've not planted yellow ones this year, so I know they're all self-sets from last year. The purple sprout has been really good this year. Well, no, <clears throat> it will be really good next year. It's growing beautifully. And here is the parsnips that survived early on. And so we're going to ceremonially dig the first parsnip. And this is going to be... If you don't <laughs> break your fork first. If you don't break your fork or be back or something. And this is a gift for my gorgeous camera woman. You might have to come back to this in a minute. 
not, not to be defeated by the other side. There we go. So. Oh, they look nice. Blimey. That's not bad, is it? Sorry, fork damage there. Mm. Still edible. And I know you're not supposed to dig them, according to the old wives' tales, until the first frost's been on them. But if I leave them much longer, they'll be reaching Australia. So I'm quite In all fairness, I don't notice the difference in the taste. No. Always tasted awesome. It always tastes good. This is my artichoke that's been knocked down by goodness knows how many storms, <laughs> and it comes back time after time after time. So it's the, it's the, the phoenix of the uh, artichoke it world. Is. So that's, I've had that in for four years, maybe. Something like that, yeah. But it's been knocked down God knows how many times. <laughs> and still it comes back. So lesson for that is if something gets knocked down, don't pull it up, cut it off at the root, it will probably come back. This is the apple tree that was dead. And I gave it some healing and it came back to life. But the weight of apples is pulling the fence over. Now the fence needs healing. Now I need to heal the fence, absolutely. <laughs> These also, I've got some more in the greenhouse. These were tomato seeds, saved seed, that were sent to me by a friend in Spain. The variety is called RAF, R-A-F. The fruit in the markets in Spain costs 16 euros a kilo. And it's supposed to be the piece de resistance of tomatoes. It's pretty good considering one of them was like half a kilo when you pulled it off the yeah, other week. Yeah, that's right. And that is, oh, beautiful. No smell-o-vision, Rob. <laughs> smell-o-vision, yeah! <laughs> right, okay. I want to talk about runner beans, briefly. Again, jobs for autumn. There's three stages of a runner bean. There's, that's how I like them. Just so they're all sweet and juicy. This variety is called Benchmaster, so there's no string in it at all. When it's like that, obviously you can eat it. When it's like that, what I like to do, obviously you can't eat the bean because it's gone over, but if you take that lovely bean out of there, that will cook off just like any other bean. Whoop. And I'll put tomato sauce in it and that will go into the freezer as, not baked beans quite as such, but close enough. Next stage of the runner bean, is when it's gone too far to do that and you'll notice the difference in colour that's gone purple that's your seed for next year so the runner bean then the beans themselves to eat and then the seed for next year you see the difference in colour and it just goes more purple as the as the pods dry out so my job for the weekend these runner beans were being really prolific and then we had that storm a couple of weeks ago and it knocked them over so I propped them up and the storm came the other way and knocked them down the other way all the flowers went, so I've had no decent runner beans for three or four weeks now, and it's time to take them down. But what I'll do before that is I'll harvest all of these, and I'll keep all of these in the pods for next year, and uh, that keeps them nice and dry. As long as they're dry when you store them, they'll be okay. So by the weekend, they'll have dried off a bit, and we can get lots of lovely seeds for next year. Saves money. Beetroot. Got to love beetroot. I still have a cupboard full from three years yeah. ago. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's not bad, is it? Just going over a little bit. But <clears throat> this is the most exciting time of the year because everything's ready. I don't think I've bought vegetables for about six weeks now. Another little cordial. I just raided this from my mate Mel's plot. She said if it's ripe, take it. It's ripe. So I took it. <laughs> so there you go. <clears throat> Jobs for autumn garlic. I'll be planting the garlic and shallots and onions up in November but when I picked the when I pulled the elephant garlic last year I had loads of these growing around the side of it which I think are little seeds so I'm going to plant those in addition to my normal crop and we'll just see what happens so there's a note for the future keep a check on those. Experiment. It's an experiment we like to experiment Right, into the, I've got some Savoy cabbages there ready to go out. In fact, they were ready about three weeks ago to go out, but because of the situation. These things down here are white cucumbers. 
Yeah, say no more. <laughs> when they're little tiny ones, they taste lovely. When they're great big ones, they taste horrible. So at least that's my experience of the white cucumber. How a vegetable can taste like fish, I'm not entirely yeah, sure. But that was your description. It is. It's got a, a fishy kind of taste to it. It's not only bitter, it tastes like fish. And I don't do fish. Somewhere under here, I spotted it earlier. Yeah, there we go. These are little mini cucumbers, and that is ripe, that's ready to go. So cucumbers have been really good this year. I've got three or four of these plants in. But as usual, cucumbers have taken over the allotment. They've taken over the greenhouse. There's another couple there. There's one there that's got a bit big. We've got ordinary cucumbers here. And I picked, I think, seven or 11 the other day. And here we are with loads coming still. So. Cucumbers, again, have been great. Tomatoes have been fabulous. I've only got three or four different varieties in here this year, whereas I had eight or ten varieties last year. I thought I'd cut back, and my freezer is now full of tomato sauce. So, <laughs> so also, not only but also, I grew this little thing called a cucumber melon. Kept it in a pot to, they look like that, there you go. They're a cucumber that looks like a melon tastes just like a cucumber. I've had to cut all these back. This one plant took over the entire end of the greenhouse. So grow them if you wish. They're good for putting in gin instead of olives by all account. But or on a salad, or like a, a cherry salad. tomato. I just eat them. They don't make it to the salads. So down this side, excuse me while I munch my cucumber. Second lot of beetroot. We're actually ready now. Another lot of parsnips. Self-set tomatoes everywhere. And the leeks will be ready in the not too distant future. In fact, I think a couple of them are ready now. So all my potatoes came up yesterday. I posted a video yesterday, a very short one. Had to be short because my camera woman wasn't around. So. <laughs> Sorry. So that's where the potatoes were. All I need to do now is just rake that level and that's dug ready for next year. More marigolds. They really did work earlier on. But of course what I didn't count on is that that's a seed head. I'm gonna have marigolds growing forever. <laughs> but hey. Red Bull Brussels sprouts looking really good apart from the white fly. Got some cauliflowers in there. We've got this is summer purple sprouting. It didn't really work for me, but it could have been the weather. It's uh Got cucumber on my lips there. But I've got lots of winter purple sprouting over there and on the other plot. So, shall I take you around the other plot? We'll do a separate one for the other plot. Right. And that's about it, really. It's been an up and down sort of year, but it's been very productive. But now we've got the time coming up where everything needs doing. So, I think for the next three or four weeks, I've really got to put my back into getting this thing cleared. Until then, have a good one.